The next topic is unlocking unlimited online sales with digital strategies. And as I was saying, if you're thinking, how can I actually make this money online? Um, our next speaker is a guy for you. He's made, if I'm collecting just 10% of what he's making, I think I'll be okay. I'm not able to go to success again. He's catching me in Bahamas somewhere, just chilling. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please. Um, our next speaker, before I just call his name, is an entrepreneur, international conference speaker, influencer, widely celebrated online business coach and mentor, is a seasoned teacher who has spoken at conferences and events in five countries, including Nigeria, Ghana, Cameroon, Kenya, and of course, the UAE. Over the past four years, he has built an online following of well over 100,000 of online entrepreneurs and business owners across social media. And having done, yeah, having done over $150,000 in sales of digital products online for himself, he has undoubtedly, somebody said, well, he has undoubtedly built massive authority online. He has built an outstand, outstanding, I beg your pardon, reputation in the online sales space in Nigeria with several awards, including Exceptional Millennial of the Year Award, which he received recently. He is a multiple award-winning, fast-rising influencer in the personal development, transformation, and make money online space in Nigeria. And his impact on thousands of people is undeniable. Please welcome with me our next speaker, Kenny Omokoye, with a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mayoa, for the invitation. It's a privilege to be here. Let me quickly move this guy forward a little bit and also raise this guy as well. Okay, fantastic. Hi. Awesome to be here. Um, so I'm just going to go straight into what I have for you here today. Um, I have been in the online space for not too long. I mean, the gentleman and lady who spoke just now, they are more, they're more of the, the veterans in the space, so to speak. But I myself, I've only been playing in the space for about six, seven years now. And you know, you know when God, when something happens and you move at a very fast pace, there's nothing scientific about it. There's nothing scientific about it. There's nothing short of God's grace. And and of course, some of the things I'm going to be sharing here with you today. How many of us here you consider yourself to be a solopreneur? You are your CEO, your manager, your marketer, your sales team, your everything. Show of hands. Because me, I'm a solopreneur too, so <laughs> we are many. Yeah, so everything I'm going to be sharing with you here is stuff that any solopreneur can take and work with and get some really, really great results online. Because it's stuff that I have tested. It's stuff that I have also taught people. By God's grace, my students have done a cumulative of over 2.5 million in the last two years in dollars. And that's, of course, by applying... You're one of them. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> so, um, and that, of course, that, that's because of proven strategies and frameworks that have been taught to them and they've been able to implement those things and get some really great results for themselves. So I'm going to be teaching on how to unlock unlimited sales online using digital strategies. Digital strategies, of course, that work in 2023 and beyond. Of course, the first thing that we're going to be touching on here is the starting point, which is your target market. Everybody knows what the target market is. Most people don't know why the target market is important. I have asked, I've had the opportunity to ask a couple of people this question before. Say, who is the person you are called to serve, right? And if I throw that question to the house now, it's very possible that I might get the same response that I normally get. And the response I normally get is, um, uh, for example, you're, you're playing in the make money online space, for example. So the response I normally get is something in the lines of, I'm called to serve the people that want to make money online. Or 
people who have a nine to five job or people, the moment I hear people, then you don't know who you're called to serve because it's an individual. It's a single individual. And if you have a very good understanding of their pains, you have a very good understanding of their desires, you have a very good understanding of their frustrations. How many of us have ever come across a piece of content or an ad and you feel like this person just needs my friendliness? How many of us have ever felt like that before? I have felt like that before. In fact, it was so it was this um mind transformation funnel I entered sometime last year. And I made my way through a, cre- a quiz funnel, with like a quiz funnel. By the time I got to the end and I generated the results in the quiz funnel, I was almost in tears. I've never had anyone know me as much as that quiz results showed me in my hand. I'm like, take my money, just take my money, solve my problem. You know, why? It's simple. It's people are ultimately driven to gravitate towards people who understand them. The greatest need of a human being is to be understood. And so if you can make somebody to feel like I understand, like, like they're understood, then it's very easy for you to nudge them in any di- direction, right? And so that's why you need to know the person that you're called to serve. That is your, they will call it the customer avatar. Some people will call it the, the customer avatar. Some people will call it the buyer persona. There's different names for it, but it's the same thing. You have to develop that avatar and all multiple instances of different avatars that you're called to serve. I'll tell you why. An example for buyer persona, let's say you're running a logistics company and an example of a buyer persona for a logistics company would be something like a lady who is called Fumi, right? We're all African, so I would just call her Fumi. And this lady is running a logistics company from Lagos. And for a long time, she has been playing small. She wants to be able to reach more people. She wants to be able to, you know, um she wants to be able to get her products across different states and across different countries in africa right now she doesn't run the logistics company you run the logistics company but your your understanding of who she is and what she wants and what she has experienced before the negative experiences that she has had maybe in the past she has tried different logistics companies and the logistics companies that she works they tell her madam don't worry i'm gonna be there in the next 45 minutes two hours later she's still waiting for them that might have been her past experiences these are real world things if you know all of this about her you can use that information as a weapon you can use that information in your sales messages. You can use that information in your content. I'll give you an example. I could just lift up my phone right now and say, hey, if you've been struggling to get the best logistics company that will deliver your stuff, maybe you've tried getting people to deliver your stuff in the past, but they tell you for the five minutes and two hours later, you're still waiting. You, know? you see, so because I have that information, I can talk to her. And the beauty of having that information is everybody who is just like her within the market will answer. Every time you use that language, they are programmed to answer because you understand them. Now think about the powerful, the powerful effect you will have on your business if you have multiple instances of different avatars. If you have one avatar who is like Mrs. Fumi, you have another avatar who is a young guy who runs a, a, a what's it called, a shoe brand out of Abuja, and he wants to be able to reach more people. His own business is different. His own problems is also different, right? But if you know those problems, then everybody who is just like him, if you mention those things in your sales messages, they will answer. So that's that for that. I will not spend too much time on that. And then you also need to know, of course, how you can use it in your messaging. So I just mentioned one of the ways in your content, for example. How many of us here create some kind of content? Video content, uh, short form content on Twitter, long form on LinkedIn. Right? I'm going to talk a little bit about, about social media as we're going on. So you can use it to improve your messaging through your content. And what I always, I always use this as the starting point whenever I break into any markets, because if you are heading in, if you don't know who you're called to serve, then you're, you're trying to serve everybody. And if you're trying to serve everybody, then you're serving nobody. So you have to have that one person, right? That's why this is important. And so the next thing is visibility. You've heard the saying before that best known beats best. And especially when it comes to online sales, best known beats best every time. 
I mean, we, we, we know about the guy who currently holds the Guinness World Records as the world world's longest tongue. I don't know how many of you have seen the guy before. It's crazy. You see the guy's tongue, it's, it's just absurd. But, but it's weird because that's the guy who holds the record because he is known. It's very possible that there's some other guy who has a tongue that is twice as long. But because we don't know him, then he doesn't exist. So best known always beats best when it comes to the online space. The most visible person will be, it will be so much easier for you to sell if you're the most easy, easy to reach or easy to see. You know, if, if somebody comes across, you know, maybe your advert online, for example, on Facebook, they see your video, but because they know you already, right? How they will react and interact with that piece of ad will be different if they didn't know you. That's why visibility is super important, right? I started investing in visibility in 2020. I didn't get a loss. Between 2020 and 2021, I only I think I was only able to gather like 700 followers in one year. But then when I shifted from me, 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 I want followers, I want followers, I want followers too. I want to help people, I want to help people. In the space of one year, that following became 97,000. Right? So that's the tree in, in between anyways. So visibility, best known beats best. You have to create brand positioning because most times, especially when it comes to online sales, before somebody will want to do business with you, they're going to search for you first. They're going to search for you first. You go to Facebook. Uh, Kenny, who is this Kenny guy? Self? Kenny Mokwe. Some people will go to Google. Some people will go to Facebook. And some people will turn to FBI on top of this matter. I'm not even joking. They will go to Facebook first. They'll say, let me see if the guy is on LinkedIn. They will go to LinkedIn and they will check. And they will go to TikTok and they will check. They want to see whether they will see something negative so that they will not do anything. You know? And that's where uniformity in positioning comes in. So there has to be uniformity across the entire online space that you're visible. If you're on a platform like Facebook, for example, what you say on Facebook about you has to coincide with what you say about you on LinkedIn. What you say about you on LinkedIn has to be the same thing as what you say on your website. And so anywhere that anybody decides they want to go and find you, they will see the exact same information. And so that uniformity helps to strengthen your positioning in their mind and make them feel like this is somebody I want to do business with, right? Let me ask you that question. You see, that. if I Google you now, what I find would it make me feel like doing business with you? Would it make me feel like doing business with you? Would it make me feel like buying from you? Would it make me make a logical conclusion that you're the solution to my problem? Because people are always in that YFM, what's in it for me? Once I jump into your social media, I'm not really interested in how beautiful or smart or fine you are. In that point, I don't know you. I'm cold. I'm cold traffic, bro. All I want is, how can you help me, bro? That's what I'm after. Like, what's in it for me? Right? And so, at that point in your, like, branding, the super most important thing is two things, really. People only want to see who you're trying to help and how you're trying to help them. That's all they want to see. When they don't know you, that's all they want to see. Who you're trying to help and how. And in that moment, they make the decision, okay, will I follow or will I not follow? Will I buy or will I not buy? Will I find out more or will I not find out more? That's it. Who you're trying to help and how you are trying to help them. Those two things, right? And so uniformity is super duper important as well. Now, the next thing quickly is traction. So if you're by the time you have been able to get that positioning in place, you're now visible, right? You're now visible on social media. You can take that to the next level, right? Excuse me. You can take that to the next level. I'm going to teach you a very, very powerful principle here. It's called the GRT principle of attention. The GRT principle of attention. You should already know this, that attention is the currency on social media. Attention is the currency online, period. The person who holds the most attention holds the most influence. The person who holds the most influence makes the most money. Look at Mr. Beast, for example. First human being alive to become a billionaire off of YouTube. How? It's simple. The GRT principle I'm about to expose to you. The G in this principle stands for the ability to get people's attention. And I'll tell you some of the ways you get your ability to get people's attention. The second is your ability to retain people's attention. Because it's one thing for you to get the attention, but if you don't know how to retain that attention for long enough to give it emotional value, then you're filled in your assignment. 
of course you know that the attention span of people are now less than that of a goldfish it's like that's that's common news and that's why you see that on social media today short form video content is everywhere because the attention span is keep, it keeps reducing right it keeps reducing platforms like tiktok have blown up because the attention span of people is reducing so how can you play within that space attention is an ever evolving concept what attention used to love back in the day it no longer loves because it feels it's no longer profitable for its time so people who used to spend time consuming a lot of long content no longer enjoy it because they feel there's more if if, if i watch one 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 minute video in 30 minutes i've enjoyed 30. <laughs> right that's how attention has evolved over time so question now becomes how can you begin to play within that space you need to get a very simple understanding the social media as it used to be is no longer social media as it is now on platforms like TikTok, for example, the algorithm of TikTok was built in a very unique way, very different from other social media platforms. Now, what we're used to by default is you posted something on Facebook, and if people are following you or people are your friends, that's when they see your posts. Is that not it? Right? That's when they see your posts. But the algorithm of TikTok is built quite differently from that. That's why you see other social media platforms follow suit because everybody started gravitating towards TikTok because that's what attention fell in love with and the algorithm is very simple built based on the idea that i want to serve people based on their interest and based on their behavior on the app because that's more tailored right and people love the personalized experience and so on a platform like TikTok, if you go and you watch a video about twerking the moment you go and watch a video about twerking, every time you enter TikTok, what happens? You are going to see twerking videos everywhere. Because that's how the platform algorithm is built. The same thing now, if you check on Facebook Reels, the exact same thing happens. I discovered this through Facebook, not even TikTok. I watched the first, first the very first time, I love kickboxing. And so I watched Israel Adesanya's um, rematch, um, I mean, the replay of one one of his fights. And immediately after I, after I watched that video, the next day I came on Facebook again and guess what they started suggesting to me? More kickboxing videos, more kickboxing videos from random people, not from the same person. They were more concerned, the platform is more concerned about your interest than about who is serving you the content. And so if you show it that I'm interested in kickboxing, they will show you more kickboxing videos from random people. So how does that benefit you as a creator? How does that benefit you as the solopreneur in this case? simple what if i can just create the content that gets the people's attention because the platform is already ready to help you to reach them so I, all i need to do is to get them their attention because the attention is fleeting very fast in that constant state of scroll what is that thing i will do within the first three seconds that will make them to stop and then what will i do within the next 15 seconds that will make them to stay that's the retainment that i'm talking about right so your ability to get people's attention retain people's attention for long enough to provide them with emotional value now when i say emotional value i'm talking about that feeling you get when you consume content and you feel something on the inside why do you think you share videos how many of us have ever shared a video on social media on facebook instagram anywhere before show of hands you share the video there's no way you see unless you don't use smartphones you have shared the video stop lying stop lying so if you've shared a video before it was simply because it made you feel some kind of way maybe it made you laugh i love watching pranks on facebook i love watching prank videos and when it makes you feel some kind of way you feel like i want other people to feel this thing too so you share so you share the video right that's the natural response because you felt something. There was a day I watched a video on Instagram. Crazy day. I saw 100 million views on a video. And it was just children that were dancing in South Africa. They were just dancing. 100 million people went to go and watch it and enjoyed it. And I saw 56,000 comments. But yet me, I would stay in my house and I would think, think, think of what I want to create as content. After I finish suffering for that, I will not stand in front of the camera. Sometimes you will never know what to say again. Your head go blank. And at the end of the day, when you finish creating the content, maybe 300 likes so i was like why 100 million views and i observed that content very closely by watching the video from the beginning to the end even if you are a sadist even if you are the leader of your village people even if you are the leader of one evil cause it will make you smile they will laugh that emotion made people to share 
and comment and engage on the video. And by doing that, the, video, the algorithm is programmed to favor such content because people like it. It makes them still on the platform. So let's show more people. And that's how you get 100 million views. It's not that difficult. Of course, I was going to take as many questions as possible, okay? So you can just maybe pen it down or something. Thank you. So it's not that difficult when you think about it. If you just understand human psychology and you understand how to make people feel, you've cracked the code. By God's grace, I've had two or three videos that have gone viral on social media. And I checked those videos out. There was nothing too special up to you. Nothing too special about the videos. But one of them happened to have a very controversial angle about the subjects. And you know how controversy is. For example, politics, if I mention obedience and everyone's like, hey, obedience, obedience, LOP. Everyone will start making some kind of you know comment about it because it's controversial. And so you have an opinion about it. And opinions are shared through emotions. And so if you understand this, it becomes easy for you to get these people to move to where you want them to be. So retaining the attention is the second thing. And the third thing, very simple, transporting that attention. Once you have been able to serve them with some kind of emotional value, before I move on to transporting, I'll just give some examples of transport of, of remit retainment. An example of that is, of course, amusement, right? The emotion that you can make people feel amusement. You can make them feel an epiphany, right? If somebody gets some kind of aha moment by listening to you or by talking with you, interacting with your content, then that's an epiphany. They just learn something new. That's and it makes them want to share because it's going to make them look cool. Right? People share because it makes them look cool. They share a piece of content, they learn something from it, and so, yeah, yeah this guy, my guys will make, they will, they will like this too, so let me share it. Right? So that's that. Now, I'm going to talk on transporting. So, transporting attention is very simple. It's just all you need is a simple call to action. People will not move unless you tell them to. I don't know if it's educational. Because it's global, it's still everybody in the world behaves the same when it comes to this particular thing. If you don't tell them to click the buy now button, they won't click it. But they want to buy you, it's not that they want to buy. But until you tell them, click the button now, <laughs> and then you tell them how they will pay you after clicking in and how they will get it, they want to know every step or they want to be told what to do. People know what to do, but they want to be told what to do when it comes to online sales. Right? So you do that by using a call to action. There's so many different kinds of call to action. For example, you want to get more followers. All you have to do is to say, if you like this kind of content, just follow me for more. That's a call to action, right? If you've got some value from this, hit the follow button. That's a call to action. If you want to send traffic from your content to maybe a lead magnet, maybe some kind of ebook that you want people to read so they can get along, you simply just say something like, oh, and by the way, if you click the link in my bio, I have a free ebook where I teach you how to do X, Y, Z. It's a call to action, right? But if you don't embed that call to action, then you're just going to be gathering attention and allowing it to go poof into thin air. And that's a waste of attention gathering, right? So you should always ensure that you're not wasting the attention that you're gathering by using some kind of call to action in every piece of content that you put out there, okay? Um, yeah, so let's now talk a little bit about platforms, right? I get, this question, I get this question a lot. Which platform should I focus on? Which platform is there the most attention now on social media? Yeah, I usually say every platform, every social media platform is a stage. All right, I want you to think about it as a stage. And you are the performer on the stage. And your, your assignment is very simple. You're showing up on that stage and you have to perform for the audience right you have to perform for the audience with your content you are using content to perform on that stage and all you have to do is to show up every day because for every day you show up to perform on that stage you are gathering attention and when you come on day 30 and you have been there from day 20 from day 1 to 29 by day 30 you would have gathered so much attention that it now evolves into traction it is that traction that you now turn into whatever it is that you want. You can turn that traction into a stage and people will pay to be on that stage. How many of you have seen that before? Dr. Makiwa's show is big because she has built traction and traction is now a stage. You can turn that traction into traffic. You can put a simple ad in front of that traction and say, hey guys, because they know you're ready, they love you. 
Some of them are even your fans. They preach your matter everywhere. And so you can see we just say, hey guys, in front of a video, I have something amazing for you. Tomorrow I'm going to do a webinar and I'm going to teach you X, Y, Z. Click the link in the comments. I'll see you tomorrow. Everybody will start moving. Right? The way I'm breaking it down, is this simple enough? It's simple, right? And boy, it's not easy. <laughs> right? So it's not as difficult as most people would make it out to be. That's just the point I'm trying to make. Now, how do you know which platform is right for you? Everybody is different in their personality type. Some people prefer not to show their face on video. Raise your hand. Mm-hmm. We are plenty. You prefer not to show your face in front of video. And so, in such a case, you would do better with audio content. Is that not it? And there are different platforms that are natively built for audio content distribution. Like Clubhouse, for example. Clubhouse is a native audio platform. And it's international now. Right? And it has so much powerful organic reach. It's insane. If you can create a, an attention-grabbing headline. I'm telling you, that's all you need to do. Clubhouse. If you can create an attention-grabbing headline and you can talk for a long period of time or get other people who can talk for a long period of time to come and talk on your stage, then you are, you are done on Clubhouse. You're made. On Clubhouse, I think currently I'm at 11,000 followers on Clubhouse. And that audience is a brand new audience from God knows where in the world. From God knows where in the world. And all I did to build that audience was simple. I simply started showing up on Clubhouse once a week, not even every day. Clubhouse only is not even needed to be every day. I was showing up once a week, and all I was doing was teaching sales, marketing, and personal development with other people that can teach it too. Simple, right? But very powerful by the time you have done it over a period of time. And now we have built a community of 7,000 people. Right? So, the platform that is right for you is based on your personality type. Choose the platform. If you like videos, then there's YouTube, right? But then if you're focusing on videos, then you definitely want to be where the attention is right now, which is short form video. Short form video content that you can use on TikTok, on Facebook Reels, on Instagram Reels, and of course, YouTube Shorts. YouTube Shorts. The short form video content is where the attention is right now. You can use that to establish your thought leadership. You can use it to build your authority. There's so much you can do with short form video right now. Okay. And then traction. How do you now turn that traction into traffic? There are several ways you can do this. For many of us here, how many of us here currently struggling to drive traffic? Don't lie. I'm just, just raise your hand. You're struggling to drive traffic in your business. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there's a couple of ways that you can turn traction into traffic. Before I tell you how you can do this, the first time I turned traction into traffic, it didn't work. Second time, yeah, it didn't work too. It was the eighth time. Yeah, it was the eighth time that it worked. And guess how many people I drove? Mm, powerful stuff. I got 10 leads. Yeah, I got 10 leads. I remember at the time I had 70 contacts on my phone. who were friends, my, my family members, and my church members. <laughs> yes. My friends, my family members, and my church members. So you can even call those ones customers or potential customers. I knew I needed strangers to come into my world one way or the other. And so I became obsessed. I developed a healthy obsession for what makes people move. I developed a healthy obsession for things that actually get people to move from point A to point B. It was in that process of developing that obsession that I discovered something that literally changed how I saw traffic generation forever it was understanding of the fact that people will move from point A to point B, or I'll call it traffic, right? Traffic will move from point A. It could be your Facebook as point A. It could be your Instagram as point A. From anywhere, even your website as point A to point B. As long as you put a powerful call to action, in front of them where there is traction the missing piece of the puzzle is usually the traction element how many of us have tried to advertise before and nobody came don't lie <laughs> it's usually the traction element that is missing because not enough of the people seeing you know you not of not enough of the people seeing you feel like they trust you enough to want to move to the next point there is no webinar I would do that has less than 800, 500 attendees. 
even if I didn't run an ad campaign for it, I could start a campaign this evening for a webinar. I'm actually going to do it. I <laughs> have a webinar tomorrow. haven't talked about it, not even a word. But I can get 500 people at least to show up for that webinar tomorrow because I have traction. You see, right? Because I have traction. And so traction becomes the ultimate golden cow that you must have. That you can milk anytime you want traffic. That you can milk anytime you want to make money. But by the way, you can also turn traction into money. How many of us know that? If you put an irresistible offer in front of traction, crazy things happen. When I was about to move into Dubai, it was just eight months ago. When I was about to move into Dubai and I heard how much I was going to pay as rent, it shook me a little bit because I was coming from Nigeria. So I was like, okay, this is a lot. But I knew that there was traction. And you can always turn that traction into anything. You can turn traction into income. And so I simply said, okay, what do I do? What do I, what kind of offer can I put in front of this traction now? And so I had my plan A to plan E. But we don't want to, if don't even have just one plan. Because if it fails, so I had plan A to plan E and I tried the first one and they made me about 30,000 naira. So imagine if it was only one plan I had. <laughs> and then I did the second one, that one made me about another 90K. I did the third one, that one made me somewhere around 80 to 120. And I still didn't have enough. I had only two options left. So I tried option D. I was banking everything on option D because option E was go and ask somebody and I will never do that. So I said, this option D just has to work. And when I did that option D, to my greatest surprise, I generated in seven days, 500 and something sales of my coaching, higher than any amount I have ever done, I had ever done since the launch in 2020. And we generated about a Naira 11.2 million in that seven day period. It was insane. Some would say it's insane. Some would say, God, when? <laughs> But I'll tell you, it's traction, right? The larger the amount of traction you have, the larger the amount of income you can generate on demand. If I had the kind of traction that Mr. Beast has, for example, and I put down my offer in front of them, ooh, ooh, you know about how, the amount of money that would have generated that week, EFCC would have been looking for me. <laughs> Right, so that's the thing, it's traction. And now here are some of the ways that you can leverage traction. The first is by using your own traction, the one that you build over time. So using your own traction via your email list, via your website traffic, right? Maybe you have a blog and people are following you on that blog and so you can use your website traffic and get more people into your funnel. And then of course, there's your contact list. How many of us are using WhatsApp here? I mean, I don't have to ask that question. But if you have a phone, then you have WhatsApp. But many of us here don't use WhatsApp for marketing. How many of us use WhatsApp for marketing? Show of hands. Very. F uh, it's only the people in the front seat here that are raising hands. <laughs> but quite interestingly, I have about 47,000 WhatsApp contacts. And I never had to send any of them any message to please save my contact. Never, ever. You've seen people do that stuff before now. They say, my God, I just want to be seeing your status. They, like, they don't want to see your status. They want you to see their status. That's why they want you to see their contact. But I never had to do anything like that. All I had to do was become the kind of person that people would want to come to so they can save his contact. Right? So your own lists. You build your list and a lot of people will be seeing you every day on WhatsApp. Nothing less than 5,000 people see me every day on WhatsApp. And WhatsApp is 5,000 people every day on WhatsApp is different from 5,000 people every day on Facebook. Can anybody relate? It's different. The size is different because it's a very engaged platform. If I put an offer on WhatsApp, it will convert 10 times more than it will convert on Facebook. Even if a higher number of people should see it on Facebook because it's a very highly engaged platform. So your own traction, second is borrowed traction. You can do this by influencer marketing. You probably know a couple of people who already have traction. So, excuse me, you know me. And so you can message me and say, hey, bro, Kenny, I want to do a webinar and I need some traffic for the webinar. What can we do? Maybe some kind of collaboration. Can we do some kind of collaboration and then we'll split the profits 50-50? I'm like, let's do it, bro. And I put your stuff in front of my people because they know me. It's because it's me that's putting it. So as I'm putting it, they will run to you. They don't care who they're running to. They care who is telling them to run. Right? 
And so you are borrowing my trust, you are borrowing my traction, and I'm sending you traffic. So that's another way, right? And then there is referral traffic. Referral traffic is gotten from shared content. So an example is something I tried out in 2021. It was a very powerful and very powerful campaign. I tried it inside of WhatsApp. It was one of those, I called it the phone crashing WhatsApp banning traffic hack. <laughs> The phone crashing WhatsApp because my WhatsApp got banned as a result of the amount of traffic that was coming in from that campaign. I'm not even joking. So what I did was very simple. I know that I have a very good understanding of human psychology. I know I know how people think. I know that people are always in that state of what's in it for me, that selfish state. And so you can work with that to your own advantage, trust me. So what I did was, so I created some kind of automation in my WhatsApp DM that when you come in the DM, I tell you, so now you're here, you should probably save my contacts first so that you don't miss any important thing. Yes, of course, you're already here thinking, what's in it for me? So if you don't want to miss that thing that's in it for you, then save the contact first. And so the next thing is like, oh, and while you're still here, I have a fantastic gift for you. <laughs> so you're tapping into that place in their mind. I have a fantastic gift for you. And in this gift, I'm going to show you how to do one, two, three. You have to be very, very specific about what you're about to get. So here's what you're going to get inside this free gift. All you have to do, very simple, just post this thing on your WhatsApp status and send me proof that you've gotten 20 views and that's it. It's all yours. You see how I build the attraction? And so everybody came, everybody came, and it was all automated. All I was doing was just chopping my popcorn and watching them go through the process. And so as they were going through the process, they were going through the process and doing what I asked them to do, and they were sending me more traffic. And the more traffic was sending me even more traffic. This simple strategy is called a viral loop. Most people don't know about it. Most people have never used it, but it's very powerful. It's called a viral loop. That week alone, I got brand new 2,000 views on my WhatsApp status. That week alone. It was insane. So referral traffic and then viral marketing, right? This is also a form of viral marketing. The example I just gave you is an example of viral marketing. You simply offer an incentive to people in exchange for a share. How does content go viral? Sharing, right? When people share your stuff, it goes viral. When everybody shares your stuff, it goes viral. The guy who sang LUP, will anybody know him if nobody shared that stuff? Think about it. So the more people who share your stuff, the more people know you, the more people see you, the more it goes viral, right? So moving forward, we don't have plenty of time. Now, there's also um, paid traction. Of course, that's your Facebook ads, your Google ads, and, inf and paid influencer marketing. Right, because we have some influencers who are so big that before you can even talk to them because of work with them, you have to drop money first, right? And then that brings me to a very important point here. Here's a mistake that I was making for 11 months in my business that made me only $24. I was selling products and services. I wasn't selling offers. Everybody that has an ear, I walk up to them and say, bro, if you want to do CV, I can do your CV for you. Very, very well designed. Anybody can say that. And so what, that, what makes me valuable? If I walk up to everybody and tell them I can do them a CV, I'm offering them a service. And anybody can devalue a service because there's too much of it in the market. So what separates you? It's hard to be Right, so what separates you from Mr. B is your offer. Your offer gives you an individuality effect in the market. Your offer gives you that USA that we hear about. The unique selling advantage is your offer that gives that to you. Guess what? The same CVs I was selling, all I did was I took it out of the market and I took it back to the drawing table and I said, how do I turn this thing into an offer now? So I broke it down apart. Here are the things I deliver to people. I don't just give them CV. What is the promise that this delivers? Okay, so it gives them a job. What if I could tell them that I'm going to give them a CV that is not just a CV. I'm giving them a solution. I'm giving them a job magnet. What if I could give you a CV that when it lands on the table of the HR manager, it goes from option to choice in less than three seconds. So now I'm not selling CV now. <laughs> it goes from option, option to choice in less than three seconds. And this CV is printed in CV paper that is imported from the United States, and I ask them a question. Have you ever seen CV paper before? 
<laughs> right? In the same offer, I tell them, this thing is going to be shipped to you anywhere you are in the world. And it will be printed for you, and you have unlimited revisions of the CV. So you can call me in the middle of the night, and we'll make any corrections that you want to the CV. And that's not even it. The real power here is the research that we did in 30 days. We did a huge research and found out that we could tailor the CVs to both local and international standards. And we did. And so now you can use this CV to land international and local jobs. And then and I'll still go ahead and I tell you, I say, hey, that's not even all, bro. That's not even all. I will also give you, if you get it today, you will get a guide, a step-by-step -step guide that you can use to get a six-figure job within 30 days with the same CV. Now, imagine that offer. Any price I put on it, it will be fantastic. If I, with that offer, we were able to price it higher than Joba Man who was pricing their CVs. And people were still buying. Because we stopped selling a service, and we started selling an offer. I think I've proved the point. Next point. <laughs> so build systems, right? You have to automate the entire process of getting results with your offers. The entire process of putting that thing in front of people, you should automate it so that you don't build yourself a glorified nine to five job. Because the essence of having a business is freedom, not money. It's not money. There are a lot of people who are making money, but they're in a cage of their own making. Some people escaped a nine to five job and ran into a hamster wheel. They escaped the rat race and they ran into a hamster wheel. What do I mean? A hamster wheel is that small round thing that the rat is running around on it. And the moment the rat stops, it stops turning. The same way, the moment they stop doing what they should be doing to generate cash, they stop making money. So they now roll from a nine to five into a hamster wheel. So how do you prevent that from happening? It's by systemizing your business and automating your business. If you put the entire process of generating your results into a system that is fully automated, you have built a freedom for yourself, right? So traffic control systems, that's one of the first things you should build. There's not enough time. There's no way I'm going into this, but I will just tell you that the traffic control system is what helps you to automate the process of getting your traffic from point A to the next point in your sales process. That's called the traffic control system. So from the first page to the next page, to the next point, to the point where they give you their money, that's your traffic control system, right? And then there's the lead nurturing system, which controls the temperature of the traffic. You know what I mean by temperature? I mean, the people who are coming to your, your funnel for the very first time, they don't know you, and so they're called cold traffic. All they care about at that point is problem. They don't care whether you have one eye, or whether you can walk, or whether you're, you're like this. They don't care about any of that stuff. They only care about the problem and what they're trying to solve. And so if you can show them at that point, that's all they want. And so what if there was a way that you can take them from that point to a point where they care about you, where they know you, and feel like, ah, I like this guy. The moment you make them feel like, I like this guy, they're no longer cold. They become warm. And then you take them from that point to, I love this guy that's when they become hot traffic. And then they're not like family members, right? And then you can just open up your WhatsApp group and tell them, guys, come in here, let's talk. They will come because they have gone from cold to hot. And so lead nurturing systems will help you to achieve that. And then there is follow-up systems. Follow-up systems to simply, that's what helps you to get in the cash from those people who don't make the decision fast. There are some of us that are just chronic procrastinators in this life. No matter how painful the problem is to you, you will not take action the very first time. Because we are not wired to talk to strangers. So the first time you come across the offer, your natural wiring will tell you, it's good. It works. But not yet. <laughs> That's the natural wiring. It's good, it works, but not yet. And so what if that's where follow-up becomes very important, right? And so if you don't show up again in front of them, you have lost the money. And they paid. The thing is, they, they have pain, but the pain is not painful enough for them to buy the first time. So, see, typically, people need to see your stuff like seven times before they buy. Typically. And so if you don't have something in place that you're using to follow them up, then you're losing a lot of money, bro. You will still make money, oh. One percent is natural. You'll be collecting the one percent home. But you could make more if you followed them up, right? So you choose. Do you want to be the trailblazer? Or do you want to be the guy who models after what works? Either way, both of them work. 
right? So the third thing is build a product or a service around that idea. But that's not where it ends. For most people, that's where it ends for them. And so they begin to tell everybody about the product or the service. That's why they're not making money. So the next thing is for you to build an irresistible offer around that product or service. But it's, in, it's still not where it ends. You still need to go the next mile by, autom- by automating the process that you use to deliver that particular offer to people. Or the moment you have done that, you now have your golden cow. And so the more people see it, the more money you make. And so all you have to do at that point is get it in front of as many people as possible. In front of as many people as possible until you find what works. And once you find what works, that's the way you now get relaxed. That's the way you've made your first couple of hundreds of thousands of dollars. That's not where you relax. You now double down on what is working and then you tweak, rinse and repeat. By tweak, I mean find the different KPIs, right? So you're testing how much traffic you're getting, how much people in that traffic is converting and all of that. You're tracking those metrics. And so you're tweaking so that you can get better results. You tweak, you rinse and you repeat until you gain momentum and then by the time you now keep accumulating momentum and now translates into that that word we call exponential growth the moment you've gotten to that point you become unstoppable really because even if you don't post again on social media you'll still get like a hundred followers a day because everybody is still talking about you once you have gotten to that point right thank you so much for <laughs> for listening you can join my 129,000 friends on social media at Kenny Okwe. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on YouTube. I'm on TikTok. And on Clubhouse. <laughs> so all you need is just to search the name Kenny Okwe and you will find me. I create very exclusive content for all my communities on social media. So you might want to follow me everywhere because the content I put out is very different per stage. So for example, on Twitter Spaces, we have like we have events every weekend on Twitter Spaces where we teach online entrepreneurs sales, marketing, and personal development. And then on Facebook, I usually just share um, inspiration and lifestyle content. And then, of course, Instagram. Of course, we know what Instagram is for. <laughs> and then, yes. And then on TikTok, I do a lot of valuable um, content on TikTok as well, mostly around sales, marketing, personal development, and my own journey in the online space so far. So thank you so much. Once again, Mayowa, um, can we get some questions? Do we have any questions? Yes, uh, the gentleman who had a question earlier on. Okay. My name is Ludwig. Nice to meet you, sir. So what about him all the IT business? Okay. So I went to our second one in logistics. And so we will stop it with green. We have a lot of content. Technically, okay. we're not you know, our end support to our one to the IT service for our customers and all the world. So we struggled with uh, converting huge tamar content, go have more stories around Of course. Very, very important. Well, something he tells me that this is mean we people would draw a lot of words. Mm-hmm. Really so what would we advise to use and you know combating those build to other clients so small, readable Tell the story with a personal brand. Tell the story with a personal brand. People relate with people, not businesses. If you, if you, if you had been documenting your journey from day one, I bet you all that content would have blown up by now. Because you would have a lot of traction that you would have built already. I'll give you an example. If I had all that content that you have right now, all I have to do is start a content series. And say, guys, I want to share with you. Yesterday, I was sharing with my community, for example, and I told them about the story of how I moved to Dubai. It was a very, very emotional and touching story. And by telling them that story, a lot of them were inspired. I ended up selling an offer and made money too. <laughs> so, in your own case, you can, you know, build your traction with a personal brand and turn that traction into even more traffic for your business because people do business with people. So in this case now, what you need to do is to start telling your story from the beginning, but in the aspect, like in like the, the way an elder statesman would, and then the way an elder statesman would sit in the room and say, so these are my experiences since I got into online business. So if you talk like that, people listen because they feel like they're learning from someone's experience, right? 
So if you come in from that angle, people are going to pay attention to you because everybody's always in that space where I want to be like the people who are ahead of me. And so if you can demonstrate to them that you are ahead of them, they're going to pay attention to you. And do it for a long period of time, the traction begins to grow and you can use that traction to even promote your brand. This is your business, right? I thank God I even give that example of the logistics avatar. I hope you caught that. <laughs> yeah, so thank you for that question. Okay, no other questions? All right, thank you.